Urian, I'll start with you. The fact that we just jumped to session highs uh, in markets right now on little more than just the possibility that this could be moving in an optimistic direction right now. What does that tell you about what the expectations are that are baked into this market? Well, I mean, how many times have we seen this movie before, right? Exactly. <laughs> expectations go up, then they get dashed. My, my base assumption is that the two sides are so far apart on the really big issues re relating to IP, basically China's industrial policy, that, yes, we may see a truce, you know, we hold back on tariffs in exchange for some ag uh, purchases. It's certainly in everyone's interest to do that. But beyond that, I think this is essentially a very long game um, with little upside potential. And in the meantime, you know, the market's been in this holding pattern for almost two years. Uh, you know, the S&P is up 5 percent from where it was two years ago, more or less. Um, but normally it goes up 10 percent per year, right? And so I think the market will remain in this sort of late cycle purgatory while we wait for the resolution. And earnings growth is decelerating. Margins are coming down. Uh, valuation, you would imagine, would get uh, some pressure based on this uh, longstanding you know, Cold War, if you will. So it doesn't paint a picture for me that tells me the market's about to break out in some huge new way. But on the other hand, with markets down 20 to 30 percent, whether it's price or valuation around the world over the last two years, uh, the longer the markets do nothing, the more likely it is that eventually it will resume in the prevailing direction, which is higher. So long term, I'm still bullish, but I don't think we're ready to break out of this holding pattern quite yet. Yeah. Jeff, in terms of these talks between the U.S. and China, it's always been about these bigger, more fundamental, longer term policies, right? I mean, if it had just been about simply the trade deficit and this idea of buying more commodities, uh, we would have probably seen a deal 18 months ago when this whole thing started. So I think it begs the question, how realistic is it to think we get some sort of deal this week, uh, even an interim deal? And if you do think it's possible, what's changed in the calculus? Well, I think that's right. I think that both sides have signaled we are not going to get a comprehensive deal this week. So if we're talking about a small or a, a skinny deal, I think we need to look past the psychology and the posturing around the talks and look at the core interests of the two countries. As a matter of fact, there are a number of things that both of the countries want to do and would do were it not for the fact that they want to spite each other. So it is entirely in China's self-interest, without regard to the United States, to purchase food. It needs soybeans. They need pork. Pork is increasing at a rate of 60 percent a year in terms of inflation. On the, and they also have a number of companies, say Huawei and others, that are sufficiently innovative that they want to protect their IP. So they're willing to tinker with their IP system and protection of IP for reasons solely of their own. On the U.S. side, Trump really does not have an interest in increasing prices on consumers in the run-up to Christmas. And that particularly relates to the October and the December tariffs that he's threatened. So I think he might be looking for an excuse to delay or cancel those tariffs to a certain degree. So he, I think he that has said he, I was going to say, uh, Jeff and Yuri, and he has said that he wanted to save Christmas. That was in part the reason for the initial delay. But more important for investors is what environment is necessary to restore some confidence to CapEx and keep hiring hanging in there? I think companies need to have some sense of what the, the rules of the game the are. The rules have changed, but they're not going to change again. The rules of the game have, have changed, that they're not going to change further. You know, we are in uh, third quarter earnings season. Um, so far, it's okay. Uh, but we're in that window during the fourth quarter of this year where the numbers for next year start to kind of resemble some reality. And right now, expectations are for 10, 11 percent growth next year. That probably should be more like 5 to 7 percent. So it is a matter of, uh, of adjusting expectations and for companies to have some sense of it's okay to put your toes in the water. And, you know, I continue to use sort of the Brexit analog as an example where Brexit's been going on for three years. The stock market's done okay over there. Earnings are actually up, but the P.E. went from 16 to 12 over those three years because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. And I think the risk for our market is not that earnings are going to implode. I mean, mar margins are 12 percent. They were at 6 percent in 09. So there's a, a very large buffer there. But the, the risk is that investors are just going to be less willing to pay a 17 multiple, and maybe it's more like a 15 multiple. 
Uh, Jeff, uh, back to the talks themselves. To what extent is the inclusion of uh, the protests in Hong Kong, the persecution of the Uyghurs, even the president's public uh, ask of the Chinese to investigate Joe Biden and his son, to what extent does that, if any, complicate the current talks? Well, these complications are all unhelpful. All of those issues are important. They should be addressed, but they should not be lumped together with the trade issues, which are difficult enough to solve. Basically, what's happened is the stumbling block here in the trade dispute is China's refusal to address industrial policy. And since China has been intransigent since May, the hardliners in the administration have started adding new issues to the discussion, including fentanyl and other things. So these are all coming from people who, in reality, both want to gain leverage, but also want to try to decouple from China. This is extremely unhelpful, and if we ever want to get to a resolution of the trade dispute, we need to focus on the trade issues solely and break out the other issues separately. Lastly, quickly, Yurian, the other big geopolitical news of the day, Turkish military coming into Syria, fighting against the Kurds right now. How closely should investors be watching this? I know you got the Turkish lira at a four-month low versus the dollar. It's helped propel oil markets this week. Could this become a bigger issue, especially if you're focused on emerging market? Uh, I mean, certainly for <clears throat> emerging markets, <clears throat> if you're in an index of some sort, you know, Turkey is going to matter. Uh, <clears throat> but it is one of the smaller pieces like Venezuela, okay. Argentina. Overall, for the average U.S. investor, um, I don't think it really changes the dial from a, just a market perspective.